Now some of you might have seen these videos floating around on YouTube of people using DALI, the image generating artificial intelligence that's kind of blowing people's minds. In this video, I'm gonna take it a step further and compare DALI to paid Fiverr commission artists. With a budget of $1,200, I'm gonna see if I get something comparable using DALI. But to do that, I have to go into the past. Over a month ago, this was my first ever session using DALI and I was using your prompts that you left in the video when I first explored DALI. I'm gonna jump right into the ones that I ended up giving to Fiverr artists. But if you wanna see even more first impressions and some of your prompts turned into images, this is the time code later in the video. I'll just put it all together so you can see a little bit more of my first experience. But let's jump into AI versus Father. All right, I love this prompt by Enigma Works. The answer to the meaning of life, the universe and everything inscribed on an ancient vase during a nuclear apocalypse. Ooh, 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 ooh. So one of the boundaries that they've put on Dali is to not uh, create images of horrific or, or tragic events, especially like catastrophes. Ancient vase set in a desolate, abandoned, destroyed city. I think all those words will sort of help convey a post-apocalypse vibe. This is just so interesting. All right, what you got? <laughs> it's literally putting the universe on a vase. <laughs> this is where you can just sort of workshop the prompt a little bit to get closer to what you're looking for. A mysterious hieroglyph inscribed on an ancient vase uncovered in a desolate, abandoned, destroyed city. So here we go, we've got some ancient phases with hieroglyphs. So maybe if we reverse this, a desolate, abandoned, destroyed city featuring a mysterious vase covered in hieroglyphs. So I think because of his interpretation of human language is prioritizing those earlier uh, words and sentences. So I'm hoping by flipping this, we can get more of a a dramatic scene. And here we go. We're getting much more ancient destroyed city vibes, which are pretty cool. Like this feels like it could be like Magic the Gathering card art or something, you know? And one thing I've noticed that they've done in a lot of their prompts, because these are sort of like struggling to know what style to cling to, by adding comma digital art. So if we specify digital art, oh my God! Oh my God! These are incredibly cool. Welcome back to the future, well, the present, I guess. Prompt one, a desolate, abandoned, destroyed city featuring a mysterious vase covered in hieroglyphs, digital art. Let's see what they've done with that for the money I gave them. Now, the first artist we paid was Juneki, whose prices start at $22.78 per image. They sort of have some cool stuff on here. They look pretty competent. We ended up paying $27 and we got this. I mean, it, it's, it's decent. It definitely communicates what I asked for, probably even more accurately, because you can see the civilization that existed. But the interesting thing is, and this is just my honest impression, Dali produced much more skillful aesthetics. The composition, the drama, the lighting, and the sense of aesthetic balance is actually way better in the AI produced images. The second artist that I commissioned, we paid $240 to, and they made nothing, and we got a refund as credit, which I have to now spend on Fiverr, and they've since closed their Fiverr account. I can't even show you their profile. We got nothing except for Fiverr credit, which I don't want. <laughs> Sorry, Fiverr. This isn't looking good. <laughs> now, the third artist we commissioned was Evelyn Brandt for $192. They also no longer have a Fiverr account. So I can't show you what they've advertised their other work as. So if I spent $192 and got this artwork, I mean, I think that's well and truly worth the money. It looks very impressive. It looks really well produced. But not being able to find their profile leaves me a little uncertain as to the legitimacy of the originality of this piece, because it does look like a piece that might exist in other contexts. That may be entirely unfair of me. So Evelyn, if you happen to see this and you worked very hard on this piece, thank you, you did a fantastic job. All right, let's jump back into the past and get another prompt. All right, we're back to the past now. And our next daily request is by Curio PK. The prompt's being an astronaut in the style of a Renaissance painting. <laughs> this one looks a little bit like Elon Musk. And that's the funny thing about, like actually in my induction with the Dali crew, one of the things they said is some of the portraits of people, while they may not be actual people, it is pulling from media that's all out there. So while I didn't say Elon Musk in a spacesuit painted like a Renaissance painting, based on the prompt and all of the references out there about astronauts, Elon Musk's face, I believe, will probably be out there in a lot of marketing material. That's a pretty cool prompt. I want to see more 
of the astronaut floating in space. It, it did just fine. Oh, look at that. That one's really cool. This one's really cool. This one's really cool in particular. I'm gonna grab this one and I'm going to click variation. <laughs> oh my God. Just look at this. Yup. That happened. Okay, I think we've got our second prompt, people. Let's go over to Fiverr and see what we get. John C. Maxwell, we paid $184. Once again, the prompt was an astronaut floating in space in the style of a Renaissance painting. This is well delivered. Great to see that I got what I asked for, except it's kind of stolen. Let me explain. This is a picture of an astronaut floating in space with exactly the pose. I don't even know if this person has paid for the stock images that they've used to produce this prompt for $184. Potentially stolen stock images. And let's say that it was stolen and I paid for this work and released it. Maybe put it on as a book cover thinking I paid for an original artwork. I believe that the stock image website might have rights to sue me or get some sort of recompense for the fact that I'm using unpaid for stock imagery. Oh. And it doesn't even look like Renaissance style. <sighs> Let's go back to AI, shall we? <laughs> oh, hello. Welcome back to the past. Uh, this prompt by Olivia White has me pretty curious. We have the prompt of a massive Furby with human spider legs weaving a web over Tokyo in the style of Junji Ito. I mean, that's a lot. If I were AI right now, I'd be like, ooh. What? That is a Furby spider. It's black and white and intricate. Well, you know, some more intricate than others. Like, okay, this one is like pretty impressive. Uh, I've picked some prompts that are pretty heavily skewed in the favor of AI so far. I think this one is more skewed to human interpretation. Let's see what we get from Fiverr. A massive Furby with human spider legs weaving a web over Tokyo in the style of Junji Ito. This is the profile of the artist we found and paid. I believe Rob picked this person because their style is already sort of in that vein of Junji Ito. We paid them $121. And uh, as Rob relays to me, they were easy to communicate with and they nailed it. And I agree, they absolutely nailed it. And in fact, it completely smashes it out of the park. AI did not produce anywhere near the quality and specificity that the artist Drio, Driop project. They're highly reviewed. They clearly produce original work and that deserves commendation. It's nice to have a win for humanity. We have a couple, but actually so far AI overall seems to be winning. Let's see if this trend continues with our fourth and final prompt. Oh, hello, welcome back to the prompt section. And I like K9's prompt of a unicorn walking on rainbow or underwater or under the sea. Ooh, and let's get even trickier here. Let's let's remove that last part of the prompt, a unicorn walking on a rainbow in the style of Caravaggio. <laughs> Where, look, this is pretty Caravaggio to me. Some of these are quite impressive. I'm gonna take this one and get variations based on that. I mean, look at that. Some of these are pretty incredible. Ah, oh, this is just mind blowing. Let's get some variations on that. Yeah, look, and some of these are pretty bloody impressive. Let's see how Fiverr artist does. Fiverr time! All right, there you go. That's my segue now. Fiverr time! The prompt, a unicorn walking on a rainbow in the style of Caravaggio. The first artist was paid $176. This is their Fiverr profile. And obviously they were chosen because they are presenting high quality painting. And we got this. So, <laughs> first of all, we have the question of, is that worth $176? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say no, but I don't feel bad saying that, especially because it's very clearly plagiarized. And in fact, a quick Google image search of a unicorn on a rainbow gives us exactly the unicorn that they badly photoshopped onto a watercolored rainbow. Honestly, the whole doomy gloomy, like, oh, AI is gonna take people's jobs now. Real artists shouldn't be worried because if you're actually working hard, you can upskill yourself and deliver on the specificity. What they should be worried about is the thieves of humans who are ripping off other people's artwork and making money from it. Oh my God. The second artist, we paid more. $211. This is their Fiverr profile. Again, we're finding people who are showing moody, 
uh, painterly styles. And you're selecting based on what you think will match the aesthetic of what you're after. Um, and now the $211 we paid was actually upsold from their $45.57 rate. They proposed an additional $150, we thought, because they're gonna deliver better quality. And we got this. <laughs> okay, first of all, uh, we can find pretty quickly the exact stock image that they used. There, there it is, sparkles, sparkles there on the on the rainbow, on the unicorn. Yep, and there it is. It's so badly photoshopped. And then the rainbow, the rainbow is from the YouTube video, how to draw a rainbow step by step. <laughs> they took a screenshot from a YouTube video. Now that, that's a piece clearly inspired by Caravan. We have one last shot at this. One more artist, Kyle Arts. This is their profile. Again, we found them based on the works that they're showing that they produce. The commission from Kyle Arts cost $85. This is the cheapest of the three from our fourth prompt. For $83, Kyle Arts produced this. I suddenly feel like my faith in humanity has been somewhat restored. I've done as much backlog searching as I can to find where this might have been reproduced from or copied from, I don't see anything immediately. And on top of that, you can see in the profile, it's a matching style and skill set. I am just sad that they charged $83 where I have paid a total of $545 on non-artists to rip off stock images off Google. And here is a hardworking artist who gets paid $85 because they're fighting against that tide of ripoffs with real value for less money. Now to try and somewhat rectify this, I have $240 of credit on Fiverr. I'm gonna give all of that to Kyle Arts as a tip. And hopefully in the balance between AI and humanity, that will help tip the scale towards actual deserving working artists to continue to be paid for their work. But my God, how depressing in this video that much more than half of what I've paid for is rip off or undelivered. I try and be optimistic and I do think there is an optimistic spin on this where if you're a hardworking human artist, you will find the work if you can validate that you produce that work because humans can always produce something much more specific than AI can. And skillful artists who utilize tools like artificial intelligence to enhance their own work will continue to thrive. I'm gonna go back to AI and share my first experiences and my first time using Dali to, with all the prompts that you guys gave me from my first video mucking around with it. Before we jump to that, I wanna let you know that there is only a couple of weeks left to grab the merch before it's gone. When I say the merch, I mean the merch. Every piece of classic merch that I've sold in the last five years. Big landmark sayings and moments in the channel from I'm an adult to a noxious but consistent kinesthetic learner. All of my classic merch pieces are going to be phased out in the next couple of weeks and you can get 10% off of everything using the code last chance because it is your last chance to not only get all that merch but also at a discount. It supports the channel and we're lining up to launch a whole bunch of exciting new merch which I can't wait to share with you designed by humans. That's gonna be like, the, that's gonna be like a little little watermark. Humans are gonna have to add to things now to prove that, but that could be added by AI. I'm so lost and confused. Let's just jump to me reacting and interacting with Dali for the first time. I personally believe the first thing to be hit with the greatest impact from something like Dali 2 is stock images. It so happens that four days ago, I was working on some prototype art for a game that I'm producing. So I'm producing user interface art to create a UI for our prototype. User interfaces are often really specific to the product, whereas stock images have to be pretty broadly applicable. So I can't find anything unique or appealing for the game I'm designing. So I gave Dali the first few prompts I'd ever given it. I'd never used this tool before, but I said, hey, Dali, create a donut shaped glass sphere game UI asset. And it made this among other prompts. Hey Dali, make a golden Celtic pattern coin with tech elements for a fantasy game UI. And it made this among other prompts. Hey Dali, make a transparent blue orb as a pickup object for a medieval fantasy game. And it made this among other prompts. Hey Dali, make an ornate bronze oval frame for a medieval fantasy computer game, comma UI element. And it made this and so on. Unique user interface elements that I could quickly combine into exactly what I wanted and no artist made any money. And the artists who produce the broadly applicable images for stock image websites I think will be impacted pretty quickly. Like there's the meme of like that, the stock art of people laughing while eating salad. <laughs> Look at that. I have six images that I can use that were generated by AI. The people don't exist and no one produced those images. That is a job that was being fulfilled 
that AI is doing for free. Let that soak in for a little bit. Danny Nash suggested a kiwi eating a kiwi. So let's chuck that in. Oh my God. <laughs> There's a few here where, I mean, this one just looks like an open kiwi fruit <laughs> eating itself, I guess. This one has the beak of a kiwi on a kiwi fruit. It's very interesting. And these four are, I think, exactly what's specified. Now, a comment by Philosopher who says, I've noticed AI sucks at hands and generalist AI isn't very good at waterfalls. So incorporating those would be a good test. And their prompt is hands cupping a waterfall made from the universe. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry to say, AI is now terrifyingly good at both waterfalls and hands. Oh my God. And uh, Slashes22 has a knight in shining armor riding a griffin alongside a camouflaged archer in green and a wizard casting spells, all of them standing on a hill fighting a black dragon in watercolor style. We've got a knight in shining armor riding a griffin. Oh my God. Alongside a camouflaged archer in green, all of them standing on a hill. There's a hill in all of these fighting a black dragon in watercolor style. Look, as you can see, there's a lot of mix ups here in color, in, in the roles and who's wearing what. And you know, it's a bit messy. It's trying really hard to fit all of that in. And I'm significantly more impressed than I thought I would be, which is impressive, especially because we've said in watercolor style and it's given a lot of like children's storybook aesthetic images. My mind is still blown. And we're back here one last time and I don't have a segue, but I do need to say that if you enjoy this video, please hit like and subscribe for more fun with art and creativity because it helps other people see the channel. And of course it helps justify the fact that I spent $1,200 in this video. <laughs> but otherwise, please do let me know in the comments what you think of everything in this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, but that's it for now. And until next time, I'll see you later. <sighs> I don't know how I feel at the end of this. A mixture of dark and weird feelings.